It's the Jada and Stitches Show, starring the Chibis. It's all about the crochet, I'll put you in the know. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. Jada and Stitches Show. Everybody. Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Today we have another bag pattern for you, but this one was designed with the kids in mind. We are going to make a toy tote. This little bag has the purpose of keeping all of those collections of little toys in one place. So the dinky cars, the action figures, the Lego, the dolls, the doll clothes, you know, all those little plastic bits and pieces that wind up under the couch and the rug and the fridge and your feet. <laughs> It's easy to carry from one room to another, or from house to house. It's got little handles, which are easy to grab with a little hand, and there's lots of room in here for stuff. It's a double strand project, so you're going to hold two yarn um, strands together throughout, kind of like we've done with the other two bags we've done recently. But you don't have to use cotton, although I did with this project. You can use acrylic too, because it's a smaller bag project, and the weight of things in it will not be as much as a bigger bag, although I wouldn't recommend carrying a bowling ball in here. <laughs> You can make it all one color, you can make it two colors like I have, or you can use that splice color technique that we did with the Happy Scrappy Market Bag. Use up your scraps or make it specific for the child you know would love it. I have sort of a Captain America thing going on here, and we've got all sorts of fun little appliques that you might want to add to your bag too. We've done a lot of them on the show, so we've got a playlist put together. We'll put that, put that in the description box down below, and you can check it out later. But let's face it, this bag is so freaking cute, you're probably going to want to make one for yourself. I did think I was going to give this a one away, but I'm thinking maybe I might keep it. I don't know. <laughs> So, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a toy tote together. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. In order to make our toy tote, you're going to want approximately 400 grams of yarn. So, 100 grams per color if you're doing a two color tote like I am or 400 grams of all one color. So I've got some medium worsted size 4 yarn here. I'm using 100% cotton. You're also going to want to decorate it. If you're going to make some appliques to decorate your tote with, then you want to use the same yarn. So I'm using cotton to make my appliques, um, but if you were using acrylic, you could use acrylic to make your appliques. And we've got links to this particular star tutorial in the description box down below, along with all of the appliques we have done already here on the show. You're also going to want a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and I'm using an 8 millimeter hook today, also known as an L or 11 in the US. It's a size 0 in the UK. You can get away with a 9 millimeter or a 10 millimeter too for this project. They all work just fine. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. To begin, make sure you're holding two strands like this together. We're going to treat two strands as one big thick strand of yarn throughout, so two strands held together. We're going to start with a cinch circle. And once you've secured your cinch circle, you're going to work nine, I beg your pardon, eight, <laughs> eight single crochet into that circle. Once you have eight single crochet worked into that cinch circle, grab the short tails uh, <laughs> and cinch your circle shut, nice and tight. We're going to be working in the round, so we're going to be not joining. We're not joining our uh, rows with a cinch or a slip stitch. We are just going to be working directly into the next stitch, around and around and around, so no joining of the rows. I'm going to work over top of my short tails, but you can leave them out and weave them in at the end if you so prefer. We're going to work directly into that first stitch by working two single crochet into it. So two single crochet into each of the eight stitches from row one. 
So two single crochet in each stitch all the way around. At the end of row two, we'll be up to 16 stitches. You should have 16 stitches at the end of row two. Row three, we're still increasing. And the pattern for row three is two single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch. Two, one, two, one. Repeated all the way around eight times. And at the end of row three, you'll have 24 stitches. At the end of row three, you should have 24 stitches. We're going to continue increasing in row four. And the pattern is now two single crochet into the first stitch. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And we repeat that all the way around eight times in total. Two, one, one, two, one, one, and at the end of row four, we'll be up to 32 stitches. At the end of row four, we're up to 32 stitches. We're continuing to increase in row five. The pattern is now two single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So you should see the pattern starting here. Two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Repeat that eight times in total and we'll be up to 40 stitches at the end of row five. We're up to 40 stitches at the end of row five. Into row six now, we're still increasing. The pattern is now two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Repeat that eight times in total, all the way around, and we'll be up to 48 stitches at the end of row six. At the end of row six, you should have 48 stitches. We're still increasing. So we're gonna work two single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet into each of the next five stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next five stitches. Repeat that eight times in total. And at the end of row seven, you'll have 56 stitches. At the end of row seven, you should have 56 stitches. We're gonna do one more row of increase, so we're going to work the following pattern. Two single crochet into the next stitch, or the first stitch of the set, and a single crochet into each of the next six stitches. You're gonna repeat that eight times in total, and at the end of row eight, you'll have 64 stitches. All right, at the end of row eight, you should have 64 stitches. And if you find your circle starting to warp and wiggle a little bit, that's totally normal, don't worry about it. Just lay it down flat and just flatten it with your hands. And after this next row, it will straighten itself out. Um, and when it's in use, it won't matter at all. So we're going to do a little post work now. <laughs> This row nine, we're not doing any more increasing. There's no more increasing throughout the rest of this pattern. So we're just working single crochet all the way around. But instead of working the single crochet through the regular stitch, we're actually going to work it around the post, which is this little piece. So every time you sort of pull apart a couple of stitches, that little piece in the middle, that's the post. We're gonna work around that. So I like to take my hook, poke it from the far side, so the side away from you, through the stitch that's on the right side of the post, and then back out through the very next stitch, and that pops the post up on your hook. Then all you have to do is just single crochet as normal, and the first few stitches might take a little getting used to. You want to pull up a loop and single crochet. The next few are a little easier, so you just push the hook through the hole towards you and then out the hole next to it away from you. Single crochet as normal. And repeat. Towards you, 
and then away from you and single crochet. It might take a little getting used to. You might have to move a little slower. That's perfectly okay. <laughs> You're going to end up working 64 of these all the way around. One single crochet around the inside of the post for every single one of those stitches in row eight. So row nine is a single crochet around the inside of each post all the way around. Take your time, there's no rush, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row nine. At the end of row nine, you'll be back around to the beginning and you're going to start crossing over top of where you started your little post work. And what that's done basically is just give us a nice ridge, so a nice little flat bottom to our little tote, and that will sit nice and square on the floor, easy to toss a bunch of toys into. And from here on out, it's just plain old single crochet. You're going to single crochet in every stitch just regularly now, no post work. Single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for you know, about 10 rows, maybe 11, maybe 12, depends on how tall you want your tote. So start crocheting and I will see you in a few rows. Don't worry, there's no increasing, no decreasing. You should still have 64 stitches in every row all the way around. See you in a bit. Okay, I've worked 12 rows of just straight old single crochet since the row nine ridge row. So there's the ridge row. I've worked 12 rows. I said you could work 10, 11, 12. If you're changing colors like I am, you can even just continue crocheting until you run out of the color that you were using. Uh, it's entirely up to you. I like 12 rows and so I've snipped my yarn. I'm going to Make sure that the last single crochet in my final row is mostly in line with that little bump where row 9 turned into row 10. It just kind of helps even things out. We're going to just slip stitch into the next stitch to fasten off. So snip your yarn if you haven't already and then just bring it through that loop. Make that knot nice and tight. You can weave those tails in if you want, or you can work over top of them. I'm changing colors, so if you weren't changing color, you would just continue single crocheting. But for those of us changing colors, grab your second color and make sure you're still working two strands held together. We're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn with a single crochet in the same stitch that we've just fastened off. So we're going to put our hook into that same stitch and join with a single crochet. So this slip knot on your hook already counts as a loop. Just pick up a loop and pull back through everything. So we've joined with a single crochet. So that makes this stitch here, the stitch that you're aiming for when you get all the way around and you're continuing with your single crochet. We're not joining our rows, we're working in the round. This little stitch here, the slip stitch we made when we joined our yarn, we're going to skip that. So when you get all the way around, that's the last stitch you're going to work in row 13 or whatever row you're on now. And then you're going to just go straight into this stitch here and continue single crocheting in the round. And that's all we're going to do. We're just going to continue to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around, no joining of rows. And we're going to work a few more rows in this color, maybe eight, maybe nine, maybe ten. <laughs> it's entirely up to you, however tall you want to make your tote, and uh, also how much yarn you may have if you're using up your reserves like I am. So single crochet in every single stitch all the way around, and I'll catch up with you in a few rows. All right, I have completed eight rows of my second color in total, and I've come back round. There's the little jog where our colors changed. That's where I've worked my last stitch. I'm going to consider this the back of the little tote bag, so it's getting pretty deep in here. And now we're going to separate it to start adding some handles. We want nice, sturdy handles. What we're going to do is just flatten our bag so that we're looking at the little seam, and it's as much in the middle as we can make it. So we're just eyeballing this, it doesn't have to be perfect. So flatten out your bag so that the little jog in your color is sort of acts as your back seam and it's facing you in the middle of your bag. 
and you're going to take some stitch markers or safety pins or even little spare bits of yarn, whatever you've got hanging around, and we're going to mark some stitches. So from that flattened edge, you're going to count in six. One, two, three, four, five, six stitches. And you're going to put a safety pin on that sixth stitch. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mark the sixth stitch. And then you're going to carefully flip it over so that you're looking at the front part of your tote bag. Take a pin and mark the stitch that's directly opposite. And it can be either one you want. These don't have to be exacting. But you are going to count the number of stitches in between. So, we're going to keep this nice and flat. And now we're going to work to put in our built-in handles. So we're going to single crochet up to our first marked stitch. Alright, I've single crocheted up to my first marked stitch and before we do anything you're going to turn your bag and you're going to count the stitches in between the marked stitch. So don't count the marked stitch. Start counting on the stitch after the marked one. Count them all up to the one just before your marked stitch and whatever that number is, for me it's 12, that's how many we're going to chain. So it doesn't matter how many you've got there, just count them up. Remove that first marker, single crochet into that marked stitch, and then whenever this number of stitches is here, you're going to chain that number. So for me that just happens to be 12. Alright, I've changed 12 because that is the number of stitches in between my marked stitches. And you'll probably have about 12, it might be 13, it depends on, on how you marked your stitches, but like I say, it doesn't matter. Then you're going to take the next marker out and single crochet into that marked stitch. And that is the first separation for our first handle made. You're now going to single crochet in each stitch up to your next marked stitch. Once you arrived at your next marked stitch, you're going to do the same thing. Count the number of stitches in between the marked stitches. So don't count the marked ones, just the ones in between. For me that's 12 again. Single crochet into the first marked stitch and then you're going to chain the same number of stitches. So if you've got 12 like me, you're going to chain 12. Once you've chained the same number of stitches that you have running between your marked stitches, remove your second or your last marker here, single crochet into that marked stitch, and off you go. You've now separated for both of your handles, and we're going to work two more rows at the very least. You can work an extra one if you want, but remember these are mostly made for little hands, so you don't want the handles to be too thick. So at least two more rows where we're going to work a single crochet in every single stitch and chain all the way around, and then another row just to finish it all off. So this row will end back here in the middle. So that completes our little divide for handles row. And then you're going to work two more rows, like I said, working every stitch and then every chain and then another row on top of that of just straight old single crochet. And we'll be almost done, our little toy totes. When you get up to your first chained handle, you're just going to treat it like you would a foundation chain row. So you're going to work either all of the chain, so the most of the chain or just the top loop, whatever you like, but just try to be consistent all the way across. And, for example, I know I have 12 chains, so I need to work a single crochet into each of them. Just take your time. It always feels a little bit funny when you're working into chains in the middle of a project. <laughs> work a single crochet in each of those chains all the way across, and then continue working a single crochet in every single stitch. Do the same for the other side, and then one more row of single crochet all the way around.
All right, I've done two rows of single crochet since we divided for our handles. So you can see there's row one, row two, and the second row after the handle divide ends back here on top of our little jog for the color. Now, if this is for an older child, then you can give it one more row of single crochet all the way around. That'll make the, the straps a little bit bigger. But if it's for a little person, then you might want to stop here, in which case you'll just slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. But for those of us who are going to add one more row of single crochet all the way around, go ahead and do that now and I'll catch up with you at the end. And that's what three rows of crochet looks like. So that's the slightly wider handle, better for a slightly larger child. And once you finish that row, if you finish that row, same thing, bring it back, back round to the little jog so that your last stitch is sort of in line with it. And then just slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. Leave yourself enough tail that you can weave in the ends. So make that nice and tight. And you sort of flip it so that you're looking at the inside of your work. I'm going to thread up our tails. I like to treat them both the same. And then just weave them in back and forth underneath some of those stitches from the last row. And once you're all woven in back and forth, if you have any little strangles, you can snip them off. And what was the back of our bag now becomes the side of our bag. So our bag sits on its little bottom and you can sort of fold it up, you can fold it in half. Since we're going to now decorate it, this is where you want to grab anything you want. So if you're adding a flower or in my case a star, you can decide where you want to put it on the side maybe right in the middle in the front. And when you make your applique, leave yourself a nice long tail because that's what you're going to actually sew the applique to the bag with. So if you haven't quite gone ahead and made yourself an applique yet, check out the description box down below. We'll show you where to find this star or any number of other appliques we've done on the show. So I'll give you a second to go find one. Once you have your applique and you've decided where it is you want to place it on your bag, I'm putting mine directly beneath the handles right across the line between red and blue. You can pin it down into place if you want or if you're comfortable just sort of handling it like I am. You can pick it up and we're going to sew our applique down using that little technique I like to use where you only use the top loops of the stitches of the bag or whatever it is you are sewing your applique to. This will keep your stitches uh, from showing through to the inside or the back side of your fabric. And you don't need to make your applique in double strands. You can just make a regular old applique using one strand of yarn and whatever hook size was appropriate for that strand of yarn. So we're going to go around our applique all the way around the edge and just pause every once in a while, make sure it hasn't moved out of place. And by just picking up those top stitches, nothing shows through to the back. So you don't have any stitches showing through to the back. It makes a really neat way to attach an applique. So like I said, just keep moving all the way around the outside of your applique, picking up those stitches that are just on top of the bag. So the top loops of the stitches on the bag. Take your time, there's no rush. Make sure it hasn't moved out of place and work all the way around the entire edge of your applique. Once you've finished sewing your applique all the way around the outer edge of the applique, and as I said before, so if you do it using my little technique, you won't have any stitches showing through the back, makes a nice neat little bit of fabric. Once you're finished sewing, you can make a little tiny knot at the side of your applique. So to get your thumb and finger on it, pull it down nice and tight. And then you can weave that tail in, not all of it if you have a lot left like me, but weave some of it in underneath some of the stitches of the actual applique. This way you're using stitches that is the same color, so you're not, it's not going to show. And you don't have to worry about 
any of these little stitches showing through to the back of the fabric. So, and they weren't, they're not going to work their way out. So I like to go, in the case of a star, I like to go all the way around the center a few times. And I'm pretty sure, because this is cotton, it is not going to come out. So once I've gone around maybe one and a half times, I can snip my yarn. There we go. And that is that. And there you go, one super cute toy tote. Perfect for keeping all those little collections of things in one tidy place. We hope you enjoyed making this bag along with me this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until next time, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye!